Big wheels keep on turning. A new phone drops and we're ready to put it through its paces. The internet freaks out, but how does it compare against the phone we leave behind? The highest compliment I can pay a manufacturer is that they have refined and improved enough to be worthy of a one-year upgrade. For OnePlus this year, answering that question requires a little nuance. The OnePlus 6T is still a beast of a phone, but the OnePlus 7T brings a few fun tricks to this fight. Starting off with design, OnePlus moves just a touch taller again. From the 6 to the 6T to the 7T, we just keep scooching. It makes the 7T look slightly narrower, but it's actually pretty close to the same width as the 6T. Notch against notch, the same buttons, that awesome mute switch rocker. The main aesthetic difference is the camera housing from a tight two sensor oval to a large three sensor circle. Now OnePlus manages to maintain symmetry. I prefer this circle look, taking me back to old school Lumias and that the camera flash is built into that module. But ultimately, I think we can call design a wash. I think OnePlus has found their look, their design language. All right, if you had to put me on the spot, I'd probably take my Mace Windu OnePlus 6T over the really pretty sky blue OnePlus 7T, if you really put me on the spot. Now, just about everything has gotten a tweak. The OnePlus 6T offers up a great 1080p daily driver OLED. The 7T takes that pretty contrasty screen and boosts the refresh rate to 90 hertz. Looking a little sharper, a little more fluid. The 6T started OnePlus off with these fancy in-display fingerprint sensors, but in my early testing, the 7T's sensor has been more responsive. That one's actually kind of a biggie for me since none of these in-display units have performed as well as my favorite rear mounted sensors but at least we're seeing progress. And how your phone feels in daily interactions. OnePlus polished up the haptics a lot on the 7T. Those tighter, quicker pops. It makes the phone feel more responsive where the 6T is kind of buzzy and floppy. We should always expect performance improvements, but these are getting more difficult to quantify. A speed test or a synthetic bench, no big surprise that the new phone beats the old phone and the numbers look so much bigger. Progress! But I'm still looking for good real world applications to test these performance claims. It's something I tag iPhones and Apple a lot, but we're starting to see that performance plateau for premium Android phones too. OnePlus phones are hot rods, some of the fastest and most responsive pocket computers at any price. If you're not really trying to tap into that power, then it's not likely that a 7T will feel like much of an upgrade over the 6T. Even graphics intense gaming, we're talking about subtle differences in frame rate and load times. My new video rendering benchmark, one minute total, six clips of UHD video from my Panasonic mirrorless, transitions, a watermark overlay, and a soundtrack in PowerDirector Total Prep and render time, the 7T showed about a 20% improvement over last year's phone. Ask a video producer what they'd give for a 20% improvement to rendering time, and the answer might be pleasantly indecent. By comparison, a good thin laptop like my MateBook, easily around a $1,000 computer, took over seven minutes to deliver similar video quality. The performance improvements for the 7T might be a bit more meaningful though, since it includes HDMI output. And Android 10 includes the beginnings of a proper desktop mode. It's still super rough around the edges, but it's improving. And within the life cycle of the 7T, I think this will be capable of disrupting laptop use. The 6T does not include HDMI out, so it mostly just stays a phone. And of course, the most noticeable design change is also the most significant improvement from year to year. I maintain the 6T cameras are competent shooters, but the hardware improvements on the 7T, especially the 48 megapixel image sensor, is more photographic with better low light capturing and a shallower depth of field. And including an ultra wide shooter is super handy. OnePlus's camera software still has a few issues, but the hardware improvements are noticeable. Lastly, the batteries on paper are kind of a wash. You've got dash versus warp charging. The Snapdragon 855 can be more power efficient, but come on, you're gonna use that 90 Hertz display. So in terms of longevity, I'm gonna call this a tie just because it's gonna be super subjective in how people use these things. But that's enough rambling for me. So let's wrap this up. OnePlus 6T to OnePlus 7T has OnePlus cracked it. Is this worthy? of a one-year upgrade. Yeah, it's pretty damn close. I can't quite say 
do it for everybody unanimously because the 6T is still a monster performer. I have to reiterate, if you're not looking to do anything more demanding with your phone, then claims of performance improvements from any manufacturer won't really mean much moving forward. I mean, we've been covering the basics well since 2016. If you are the kind of user who is trying to drive a phone to its limits, maybe disrupt laptop use, then the 7T will be a welcome improvement over its predecessor, especially considering how well OnePlus's retain resale value online. A 6T in decent condition still going between three and $400 helps subsidize the price of your new phone. The 7T reinforces this company's reputation for making high performance pocket computers. And in a world of thousand dollar handsets, it's refreshing not only seeing middle pack priced phones offer up this much power, but also seeing where there's still room to iterate and improve from year to year. I'll of course leave some links down below where you can find more info on the OnePlus 7T. Maybe save a little cash on some accessories if you're looking to shop one of these online or uh, pick up some nice earbuds. It'll get you uh, properly kitted out on your brand new phone. As always folks, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to this channel. More than just nerding out on the bright new shiny, we wanna make sure that our products are aging well over time and that we're really getting our money's worth. If you would like to help support the production of those conversations, there are links down below this video in the description, or you could consider joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen. It's a growing community of fun, like-minded tech pals, a huge resource for me as I plan future videos and editorials. They're good people. I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch, and the Facebooks and the Instagrams, and I will catch you all on the next video.